Of all the 1960s science fiction shows, and there were more than we could count, The Aquatic Adventure, featured on Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, is arguably the most underrated. The series was created by Irwin Allen, a legendary action producer who went on to create Lost in Space. As memorable as that program might have been, Voyage ended up becoming the longest-running sci-fi series he ever worked on. Since it was on the air for four seasons, it meant that Voyage even outran Gene Roddenberry's era-defining science fiction masterpiece, Star Trek. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea got its start as a black and white thriller that tapped into Cold War era spy themes, but it evolved with the changing times and eventually transformed into a full color fantasy series featuring everything from aliens to time travel and even werewolves. And even if you're the biggest Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea fan around, there's probably more than a few behind the scenes facts you're completely oblivious to. Join Facts First as we reveal some of these secrets. It took place in the 70s and 80s. Generally speaking, science fiction TV shows and films tend to grossly overestimate the technological capabilities and advancements of the future. Case in point, it's 2022 and we're still waiting for flying cars. Anyway, Voyage was made in the 60s and its first two seasons were set in the not-so-distant future of the 70s. The third and fourth season got a bit weirder in terms of subject material and leaped forward to the 80s. The Sky is on Fire episode reused the feature film's footage. Irwin Allen, as a frugal man, often reused footage, props, and even a few sets to cut down on expenses. The 1961 feature-length Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea film was chopped up and retooled as the episode The Sky is on Fire, which was featured during the show's second season. Later on, the episode Turn Back the Clock reused costumes, props, and footage from one of Irwin's early movies, The Lost World. Reduce, Reuse, Recycle in the Lost in Space episode, The Lost Civilization, the Sea View bridge set was modified to serve as an underground base. The Flying Sub made another appearance in Irwin Allen's 1971 offering City Beneath the Sea, which was set in a far-off distant future in a world vaguely reminiscent of the one featured in the Bioshock video game universe. For Allen's The Return of Captain Nemo, one of the eight-foot scale models of the Sea View was taken apart and reworked as a prop for that film. Parts of the Voyage set were again used in the 1966 Batman film, and Seaview even made an appearance in an episode of Wonder Woman. Before we tell you more about the voyage to the bottom of the sea, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Renowned sci-fi writer Harlan Ellison allegedly broke someone's pelvis with a Voyage prop. Because so many of the props and models seen in Voyage were later reused by other films and shows, few of them have survived. One prop in particular met a rather unfortunate end during production. Author Harlan Ellison was one of the lead writers of the series. One day, he reportedly got into a fight with one of the ABC censors. During the scuffle, one of Irwin's six-feet-long sea view models got knocked off its brackets. It fell right on top of the guy Harlan was beating to a pulp, breaking his pelvis. The Planet of the Apes Connection after the first season, the Sea View was given a design overhaul. It went from having eight front windows to only four and could then accommodate that awesome nuclear-powered miniature sub. William Kraber served as Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea's primary art director and submarine designer. Kraber would later be hired to serve as part of the design team for Planet of the Apes. He built the half-scale Statue of Liberty seen buried in the sand at the end of the film. To film this memorable scene, the camera had to be held up on a 70-foot rigging. No one wanted to climb to the top of the sky scaffolding to get the shot, so Kreber took it upon himself to film the iconic scene on his own. Voyage star Richard Basehart became a sought-after narrator. Basehart had a distinct, booming voice, which no doubt helped him significantly when auditioning to play Admiral Harriman Nelson. In 1964, Basehart narrated a documentary film about the JFK assassination called Four Days in November. His voice could later be heard in the opening credits of the hit 1980s TV series Knight Rider. He played the billionaire Wilton Knight in the show's pilot. A few years later, he narrated the closing ceremonies of the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. The Sea View crew wore Keds. The original Keds design, the Champion, was notable for being the first mass-marketed canvas top sneaker. Throughout the 20th century, especially from the late 70s to early 90s, Keds were very fashionable with young people. But apparently, the crew members of the Sea View were also huge fans, as everyone on board rocked bright white Keds that started looking gray after scuffing them around the set for a while. David Hedison turned down the part of Captain Crane for the feature film. 
After starring in The Lost World, Hedison was reportedly uneasy about joining the cast of another Allen production the following year when the Voyage motion picture entered into production. He turned down playing Captain Crane for that film, but three years later, he would be cast to play Crane in the TV series. Hedison ended up appearing in all 110 episodes of Voyage. 007 fans probably remember Hedison as the actor who played CIA operative Felix Leiter in 1973's Live and Let Die and 1989's License to Kill. Hedison passed away at age 92 in 2019. Robert Dowdell was a Western star before playing Commander Chip Morton. After studying at Wesleyan University and the University of Chicago, Dowdell enlisted in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Once discharged from service, he took an active interest in acting and started taking lessons with Wind Handman. His first role was in a play written by Leslie Stevens. After that, he was cast in the Western TV series Stony Brook, which Stevens had created. In that series, he played recurring role Cody Bristol. Following Stony Brook, he was cast in Voyage. After the series was canceled, Cancelled in 1968, Dowdell spent the next three decades continuing to act in stage plays, films, and TV productions. In 1995, he retired from acting and settled down in Coldwater, Michigan. On January 23, 2018, he died of natural causes at 85. Richard Basehart was out sick for several Season 2 episodes. Late in the production of Season 2, Basehart, who played Admiral Nelson, fell ill and was unable to complete the episode The Monster's Web. It had to be rewritten to minimize the role of his character. Stand-ins were used to replace him, with their faces being obscured and lines dubbed over. The following episode, The Menfish, had the Admiral being away and his lines were given instead to a guest character named Admiral Park. In the episode, The Mechanical Man, Nelson was still away and his lines were reassigned to Captain Crane. In turn, Crane's lines were given to Commander Morton. Basehart was healthy enough to return in time for the filming of the season finale, The Return of the Phantom. The Sea View Rock and Roll Back in the day, a common movie trick was to have characters lurch to the tune of camera movements on an obviously static set to give off the illusion they had just experienced some kind of shakeup or impact. Star Trek was fond of this technique, but Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea was the biggest offender when it came to overusing this method. They did it so often that to this day it's still commonly known as the Sea View Rock and Roll. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.